I'm reading a book on anti-gravity investing. It's impossible to put down. All right, let's dive right in. I, I've got to tell you a story of what happened to me recently. I was meeting, meeting with a client. It was a, a new couple. They were retired. And I really got a good chance to see about how different people just don't understand what I do. So they, they came in, and uh, the husband just started talking about one account. He had this, this, uh, this one portfolio in America, and he wanted to focus on that. And I said, okay. But like I always do with people, I, I started to ask some more questions. I asked about what they do and when they're going to retire and what their goals are for their portfolio. I asked about their family and their kids and expenses and insurance and health. And, you know, I started going through what I consider to be a very normal and reasonable discussion for a financial planner. But, uh, but he didn't quite get it. He, he just he kept steering the conversation back to this, to this one portfolio. And finally, after a little while of my probing and asking questions, he finally said to me, he said, you know, it sounds to me, Doug, like you're a financial planner. And I said, yes, that's exactly what I am. In fact, that's why it says CFP after my name, Certified Financial Planner. He goes, oh, I, I get it. I get it. So that's why you're asking me these questions. I said, yes. And then all of a sudden, his, his whole demeanor changed. And what I realized was he had actually never spoken before to a financial planner, which was a little bit unusual, I think. And, and I realized as I was talking to him about the portfolio they had, and, and the two of them together really began to explain to me how they had made decisions in the past about their investing. And one of the things that I right away saw was, for example, that they had a lot of different investments in the portfolio that looked to me like they were sold to them at different times by different people that had very high fees associated, a lot of annuities and different types of funds that were very expensive. Uh, this was my first indication that no one was really taking care of them. Rather, someone was just trying to sell them things all along. Moreover, when I spoke, finally got information about all their other portfolios, all of them were like this. All of them were in different places, sold to them by different people. There was no overall picture. Could you imagine running a business where there are 17 different divisions and you don't really know what's going on in any one of them and not a single manager from any position knows what's going on with any of them? That'd be crazy. But that's kind of what they had here. They were really working all along with, with I would call them financial product salesmen, as opposed to people who were planning for them. Now, salesmen may, may have a, a real uh, useful position in the world of finances because sometimes people just want to buy a something. They want to buy a specific type of investment. And so they need a salesman who can explain to them what it's all about and who can set them up with it. It's just not what I do. And it became clear after a while to this guy and his wife, actually, but he was the one who was really more hesitant in the beginning. It became clear to him after a while all the benefits of actually working with someone who really understands your situation because we were able to open up a lot more information about what's going on with him. So although they were initially cautious, uh, the fact that the questions I asked all of a sudden began to open up new, new possibilities for them. And I'll tell you something. When we were breaking down the different investments, after a while, he said to me, he said, Doug, you know something? I don't even know what I have. I don't even know what my net worth is. We make a lot of money, and we, we seem to spend a little less than we make, and we have a lot of money in the investment, so everything's okay. I said, everything okay is not a financial plan. Everything okay is, well, it's very nice, but it doesn't really help you to make intelligent financial decisions. So once we were on the same plane, he all of a sudden began to open up and we really got, got down to, to business. So the meeting, which I think he came in thinking, this whole thing's going to be 45 minutes, maybe an hour tops. I just have to come in. Doug will set up the account for me. By the way, this was not, this was not a small sum of money. We're talking around a million dollars here for this piece of their portfolio. But what he thought was going to be kind of technical all of a sudden became an extended conversation. Two and a half hours we sat down. He was so excited after the meeting, he went around my office and spoke to everyone on the team and just said, I I've never had a meeting like this. I'm so excited to talk to you and to meet you, and I'm so happy that we'll be partnering and you'll be taking care of all my finances for me. So I said, wait a second. Let's just get our, our terms correct because it is true that we deal with clients and we help them, but we don't, we don't take it from you. We work with you. We're partners in this. You've still got responsibility. It's true that we'll take care of a lot of the paperwork and we'll help you to handle the investments. But at the end of the day, the decisions are yours. You're in charge. You're the boss of this, right? You, I always tell people, you're the CEO of your company and I'm the CFO. I'm the chief financial officer. Me and my team, we're going to handle all of the details, 
But at the end of the day, you're steering the ship. You have to guide us to what you want. We're here to help, but we don't, we don't make the ultimate decisions. And I think that was also very comforting to him because a lot of times people, very reasonably, don't want to feel they're out of control with their money. And that's, I think, one of the reasons why a lot of people are DIYers, do-it-yourselfers. They just want to do it all themselves because they're afraid that if they work with someone, they're not going to be in control. But that's just not true. When you work with a financial planner or a financial advisor who's, who's on your team, you are in charge, but you've just got someone who's there to help, you, to help you along the way, and you can bounce ideas off of him. So absolutely, this partnership approach gives the client autonomy uh, with the support of the professionals and someone else who can deal with a lot of the bureaucracy, which maybe you don't want to. And maybe you know people who, because they don't want to deal with the bureaucracy because it's a little bit of a pain, end up not doing it. And literally for months or years, they may not handle their portfolios or make changes that need to be changes simply because... They, they, they don't want to deal with it. And, you know, imagine what happens. We've seen this a lot because, especially on the Goldstein on Gelt show, I've, I've spoken about the fact that people are discovering when they live outside the United States that a lot of U.S. banks and brokerage firms don't want to work with them. And they, they won't be able to keep their brokerage account or their IRA account with this specific American brokerage firm. And then all of a sudden... They, they get a letter from the, from the firm that says, you gotta be, you, got, you gotta leave in 90 days, and then they get in a panic. And I, I understand this, because people don't wanna handle the details. And that's why when you go step by step and you just find a company that you feel you have a connection with, and what does that mean? It means that there's a person who really is gonna take care of you, or a team that'll take care of you, not some 1-800 number that you have to call and hope that the guy is in America who you're talking to, who even understands what you're talking about. That's the level of service you really probably deserve. Okay, so part of this also means that when you work with a professional, you get to put it all together. It's not just the money, right? There are legal issues. You want your, your financial advisor to contact or be in touch with your accountant, to be in touch with your lawyer. You want these meetings to happen so that everyone's on the same page. This way, you have a unifying strategy. All bases are covered. Otherwise, as in this case, by the way, this guy, he didn't, he couldn't, he didn't even know what he had. If he had to write a will and go speak to a lawyer, the lawyer would say, okay, well, tell me what's going on. And he'd go, well, I don't know. But isn't it nice that he could now turn to his financial advisor who's begun to put everything together for him? Or imagine dealing with an accountant. And the accountant says, well, give me your 1099s and your December statements from all your accounts. You may not even know what accounts you have. I often tell clients when they start to ask me, well, Doug, what year and documentation do I get from you? So I say, well, you get a 1099 and you get a December statement and a full year summary. And then I always say, well, what do you need that for? And they say, well, I've got to give that to my accountant. And then I say, would you like just for us to give it directly to your accountant so you don't have to be in the middle? Because sometimes we have clients who have two, three, four, five, six different accounts. They have different IRA accounts. They have a joint account. They may have individual, for any of a number of reasons, a, a Roth IRA, a rollover IRA, a beneficiary IRA. And they're taking distributions from some of these. And at the end of the year, there could be a lot of paperwork that they need to give to their accountant. They want to know that their partner is able to take care of that paperwork for them. And all of a sudden they go, you mean you can just do that? I don't have to be in charge of this? And I go, yeah. I said, listen, you hire your accountant. You have to make sure that he does the work for you, but just send us both an email to be in touch with, with each other and we'll be happy to, to, to work as your, as your professional team. And of course that means that we work together. When clients are empowered, it means that they don't have to deal with the details. They can just discuss the bigger pictures. They can they can they can ask the right questions. In the beginning, I'm asking the questions because I want to understand what the situation is, but it allows them to begin to imagine and dream what they want in the future. They get a little a little bit of a benefit of a professional who's dealing with a lot of people. And at the end of the day, and with this couple, it was just so funny to see the the weight that was lifted off their shoulders once they began to understand, you know, that that, that we were there to help them out. And it was funny, the husband said, You mean You'll you'll call me about making investment decisions, and I said yes. He said, and and you'll talk to me about the overall plan. I said yes, and all of a sudden he realized it wasn't all resting on him. Which, by the way, for a lot of people is important also because they're afraid what happens if they get sick or if they die. Who's going to take care of their spouse and their children? And they liked knowing that they had a partner in all of this. Everything today we've discussed is certainly not a specific investment. Uh, none of this is specific investment advice, but my advice is that make sure you have a good team that's working with you. Because if you do, 
everything, everything that you do is going to be so much easier. And that, of course, leads me to thanking my great team. I want to thank my producer, Yosef Goldstein, my chief engineer, Steve Stewart, and I want to thank you for joining me. I'm Doug Goldstein, the host of the Goldstein on Geld show, the personal finance show for people living in Israel. Please give us a, wherever you're listen, listening to podcasts, take a minute, give us a five-star review, and be sure to tell your friends, post it on social media, and hey, if you go to the to the store today, say, to the, whoever you meet there, did you listen to this week's episode of the Goldstein on Geld Show? It was fantastic. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.